The heat's turning up as the SpaceX Starbase launch pad is in the final stages of upgrading to become stronger for another storm from the next Starship launch. The concrete pouring process under the launch mount seems to have been completed before Independence Day. Also, happy 4th of July, everybody. Elon Musk's earlier estimate of a thousand cubic meters of concrete has been surpassed as the actual amount used now exceeds that initial prediction. There have been over 170 cement trucks. The real total weight associated with this stands at a staggering 5,411 tons. To grasp the magnitude of the total weight, we draw a comparison to the weight of a fully loaded Starship, which approximates at 5,000 tons. In total, the piles will support 10,000 tons. Holy moly Mother Marie. The normal time for full curing of concrete is 28 days. It sets within a few hours and reaches a significant portion of its design strength after seven days. Note that SpaceX is using a high strength heat tolerant concrete called Fondag that you can work on if needed as soon as the next day. It all depends on the choices made in the concrete formula and somewhat on the weather. Anyway, it shouldn't be too surprising that SpaceX will install the water-cooled steel plates right in the next few days. At the same time, SpaceX has now commenced the much-awaited repairs on the wall between gates D2 and D3 after the unfortunate damage incurred during the IFT event in April. In terms of hardware, SpaceX clearly has a chance to get the second orbital flight in August. Also concerning the biggest barrier, the launch license, SpaceX and the Federal Aviation Administration are asking a federal court to dismiss a lawsuit suit by environmental and indigenous groups seeking a new assessment of the environmental impacts of rocket launches from South Texas. In a filing last Friday, the FAA said the groups lack legal standing for their claims against the agency that granted a launch license to SpaceX's Starship rocket program. Separately, a SpaceX filing said the first Starship launch on April 20th provided no cause for the FAA to conduct a new environmental assessment, a process that could halt further test launches for years. For the foregoing reasons, defendants request that the court dismiss the complaint in its entirety. Todd Kim, Assistant Attorney General for the Environment and Natural Resources Division of the U.S. Department of Justice, wrote in the filing in U.S. District Court in Washington, D.C. Both are seeking to dismiss a lawsuit filed May 1st by the Center for Biological Diversity, American Bird Conservancy, Surf Rider Foundation, Save Rio Grande Valley, and the Carrizo Camacruto Nation of Texas. Their suit seeks to revoke the company's FAA-issued license for flights from South Texas. The license is currently suspended during an investigation into the launch, which public and private assessments found sparked wildfire, spread chunks of metal and concrete over hundreds of acres of company-owned and state park land, and propelled pulverized concrete more than six miles. In Friday's filing, SpaceX denied that Starship is a danger to surrounding wildlife and communities that should have received more review. It also noted that the company's program passed an environmental assessment and complied with the FAA's required mitigations. It said it launched Starship in accordance with its FAA license, and that the rocket system successfully lifted off and flew for several minutes before experiencing anomalies that resulted in the termination of the mission and safe destruction of the launch vehicle over the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX also appeared to downplay the rocket's impacts on its surroundings. SpaceX admits that the concrete launch pad deck was damaged during the liftoff, spreading some debris and dust, it said. After Starship's explosion, the FAA said the anomaly response plan, referenced in its environmental assessment, was activated, which means a new license will be required before another launch. In its filing, SpaceX said the environmental assessment has not been withdrawn or modified, and the company is working toward another launch of Starship. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has continued to tout an aggressive schedule of test launches launches from South Texas. He's pinned hopes on the reusable rocket system to expand the company's Starlink network of satellites and for NASA's plans for returning astronauts to the moon. It also serves as a vehicle for Musk's long-term goal of populating Mars. In fact, since April, SpaceX has been hard at work implementing what it learned from the first launch. Hopefully Starship can launch again soon.
The Starship explosion was not a failure for SpaceX, as experts say. The fact that the rocket succeeded in taking off from its launch pad is already a huge achievement. In reality, the purpose of the flight, says the experts, was above all to collect as much data as possible to improve the prototypes, and that is what happened, because the rocket was able to take off. The orbital launch of Starship is viewed as a leap forward for humanity, as a stepping stone for reaching the moon, then Mars, all the while carrying tons of cargo. And for our last bit of news, the last European Ariane 5 rocket arrives at the launch pad for its final countdown today. The last Ariane 5 rocket was hauled to the launch pad on Monday at the Guiana Space Center, Europe's South American spaceport. Ariane 5, which for years was the world's leading commercial satellite launcher, is scheduled to make its final liftoff carrying a French military satellite and a communications technology testbed spacecraft for Germany. Held by a 540 horsepower diesel-powered tug, the 54.8-meter Ariane 5 rocket rolled out of its final assembly building at the jungle launch site and traveled along rails to the ELA-3 launch zone. The 2.7-kilometer journey took about two hours. Gee, they must have been moving really slow. Then again, they are transporting a really big rocket, so yeah. With the rocket in place at the pad, technicians will work to connect the mobile launch table to the ground lines for a propellant that will feed liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen into the rocket during the countdown. Liftoff of this final mission, designated VA-261, is scheduled at the opening of a 95-minute launch window that opens at 6.30 p.m. Kuru time. The Ariane 5 will carry the Heinrich Hertz and Syracuse 4B satellites into a geostationary transfer orbit from the Guiana Space Center on the northeastern coast of South America. Syracuse 4B, built by Airbus, will relay secure communications between French military military aircraft, ground vehicles, and naval vessels, including submarines. It was built by an industrial consortium formed by Thales Alenia Space and Airbus Defense in Space. The Heinrich Hertz satellite built by OHB will test new communications technologies on a mission funded by the German space agency DLR. The spacecraft features onboard processors that can be reprogrammed to employ new communication protocols as they are developed. This last mission will be the 117th for the Ariane 5 since it was introduced in 1996. The European rocket marketed by Ariane Space was once dominant in the commercial launch business, but lower-cost launch services from Elon Musk's SpaceX has eroded its position. The retirement of the Ariane 5 will now, 5 will for now, leave Europe without its own independent access to space. The new Ariane 6 vehicle is not expected to make its inaugural launch until 2024, years later than planned, and the Vega C small satellite launcher has been grounded since the failure back in in December of 2022. In addition, the Russian invasion of Ukraine ended a cooperative venture that launched Soyuz rockets from Europe's French Guiana spaceport. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing goings-ons in the world of space exploration. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration, and as always, this is Kevin from Great Space and until next time, keep looking up.